All right, so MIA 12.5.19 was released for the Redmi K40 in China. It's not even released for the global devices like the Poco F3 and the Redmi K40 or the Mi 11X. Now, what exactly happens here is that this particular team has ported this particular version of 12.5.19 to the Poco X3 Pro. There is a ROM and then there is an MTP fix which will allow you to fix the device being detected on the computer to transfer data and stuff like that. So I did flash it a couple of days back. I have been busy with a lot of MIA 13 content that is coming your way. So recently I you know, saw that it's doing a good job. The benchmark numbers are decent and the MIA experience as a whole is pretty good. So I thought that this is worth a try. This is worth a review and I should share it with you guys. So in today's video, we are going to talk about this particular version, MIUI Mint BGST based on 12.5.19 ported from the Redmi K40 and we will see what is good, what is bad, what are the benchmark numbers, should you flash it or not. So before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video. Remember, it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. If you think you like chatting with like-minded people, join us on Telegram. We have more than 1500 members there with similar devices. They will help you out and give you suggestions for custom ROMs. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. And last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. Right, so let's see what we have here. We have MIUI Mint BGST 12.5.19.0 RKHC NXM. This is the maintainer device is the Poco X3 Pro. Yes, it works on both the devices. That is YU and Bima. It is based on Android version 11 and the build date is the 28th of December 2021. Now the download link is mentioned there. You also have a patch that you have to flash after flashing the ROM. There are screenshots. Now let's see what this ROM is all about. Okay. Port from Redmi K40 China, that is the Elliot, based on Xiaomi.eu 12.5.19, decrypted by default, SE Linux is enforcing, multi-language, that means a lot of languages will support, fully read-write system, debloated some apps, enable partial screenshot, fix third-party themes, add a 90fps refresh rate, add memory extension, and then there is the full change log that they have over here. So Mia Toll, Vayu, Surya. So one more edition over here. This is available for the Mia Toll series of devices. Vayu, that is Bhima and Vayu both. Surya, that is Poco X3. And then there is the Mi 11X. Now the notes do state that it includes GFs, of course. This is MIUI based ROM. Safety net failed, need Majisk to hide props. So you will use, you need to use Majisk to use banking applications. Don't PM the developer report bug on MIUI BGST Telegram group, right? Now that's about it. Let's go to the home screen and let's talk about this particular ROM. Now, remember before reviewing this particular ROM, I did experience this in the form of Xiaomi.eu on the B11X. So the host device from which this has been ported, I've already given it a try. And they have added their own touch to this as well. So there are a few things which they have added. There are a few things which they have added in terms of customization and look. For example, the moment you boot into the home screen, you will see that you get a very, very clean UI with a transparent uh, Google search bar at the bottom and I don't see the assistant shortcuts over here. But if you swipe from the top to bottom, you will see that you, they have this theme for quick tiles going on, which is uh, black and green. I would not go as far as calling it weird, but not my taste is what I would say. So, you know, you can enable and disable stuff from here. It is green, green with a black background. You do have your setting shortcut and edit menu option over here. Now, along with this, is there anything else that we can add? Not really, right? Now to the left, you do have Google Feed, which in 120 Hertz mode is doing a great job. It is working smooth as butter. Although on the Poco X3 Pro as well, it is not as smooth as it would be on a custom ROM. But trust me, from a MIUI point of view, this ROM is very, very snappy, very, very fast. If you are hell bent on using MIUI and you know, you want the latest and the greatest, probably this is one of the ROMs that you can try. Even the transitions between the quick tiles and the normal screen is pretty smooth and fluid, so no problems whatsoever. Now you do have updated system applications over here. For example, if you look at the camera application, you will see that you don't really have any major, major changes over here. Things are present and they're working as expected. So let's quickly actually go to settings over here. And let's go to my device. Now you have this customization, newbie team from Indonesia. They're doing a decent job. They're doing a good job. Not nothing, nothing uh, bad or not 
working or stuff like that. So you do get six gigabyte of RAM, all the, you know, things over here, MIUI version is mentioned and direct security is the November security patch. That's what that particular version of MIUI comes with. So the kernel, of course, is the perf kernel. Now, furthermore, if you go to other settings like security status, you will see that this menu of settings itself is from MIUI China because it is ported from there, right? So, you know, you will get always on display, although I don't recommend you to use it because, yeah, if you can put it to always, let's see here. Yeah, so you do get always on display. Now, that's a good thing here. Uh, good and bad, I mean, come on, this is a LCD panel, so it will stay on all day long and uh, that will create some problems for your battery life. So you have race to wake, double tap to wake, turn off and all the other options which are present in 12.5.19 and they are working absolutely fine. Under display over here, you have refresh rate which does have the 90 hertz option. Now what that means is you will get a good balance between smoothness and battery life, but I always prefer to use 120 hertz mode. You do have font settings, auto rotate screen and all the basic options. You do have the new you know, control center which works absolutely fine no problem whatsoever so battery indicator customization options are present so those are good things now moving on you have sound and vibration in which if you go to the bottom you will have sound effects profile video for incoming calls so basically everything that you see in the china rom is present over here now the moment you go to battery you will notice that you do have the performance toggle over here right so you have the safe battery toggle, you have the balanced toggle and you have the performance toggle. So the benchmarks that you will see later in this video are actually tested on the performance mode and game turbo enabled. Now let's talk about the battery life a little bit. You do see that we have been on battery 41 hours. Now the device has been on standby most of the time because I was busy with MIA 13 stuff as I mentioned earlier. As you can see over here, we've had very less screen on time but the standby drain is pretty decent. It worked absolutely fine. I did run a few benchmarks here and there and I did not observe any ghost touches of any sort or anything of that sort going on. If you talk about the home screen customization, you have Google Discover and all the usual stuff that you get. So nothing new over here. You can arrange the recents in horizontal memory status, show suggestions. So you do get a system launcher is what you're getting over here. Now under special features, you have AI preloading as always, standard stuff in China builds. You do have your video toolbox, you do have your game turbo, which is the new game turbo 4.0 with the performance toggle and stuff like that. So those features are present and they work absolutely fine. Now, what is so special about this particular ROM you ask? Well, you don't really get over the top customization. This is basically MIUI 12.5.19 with some minor tweaks and performance changes here and there. And it shows in the benchmark numbers. Now, unfortunately, safety net doesn't pass. You will have to use Majisk for that. But let's go ahead and have a look at the performance number. Now, as you can see over here, the CPU throttled to 90% of its max performance and the average score was 18769 GIPS. So not the highest score, but it is doing a decent job. Now, remember the gallery application that comes in this particular ROM is updated. So it does come with the Magic Eraser, the MIUI version of Magic Eraser, which allows you to duplicate or remove people. A video on that topic is coming as well. So stay tuned for that. Now, let's quickly go ahead and talk about the N22 numbers over here. As you can see, 583,137, a little better than the stock ROM, so pretty decent performance. The battery dropped by 5% while running the benchmark and the temperature increased by 7.7 .7 degrees Celsius. And the last thing that we're going to talk about is the Geekbench numbers over here. So as you can see, 739 single core, 2434 multi-core. So, you know, in a nutshell, this is a MIUI ROM which gives you all the MIUI features and goodies with making things a little better with customization and other options that they have done through this particular ROM. You do get the updated game turbo, updated video toolbox, updated gallery and all those things. So the smoothness is there. The ROM is way smoother compared to the stock ROMs of Poco X3 Pro, Vayu and Vima. So yes, you can go ahead and give it a try if you want to use MIUI ROMs and let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video. Until the next one, this is Kailash signing off at Phone Ops. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.